So the other day in my Instagram stories, I asked a question if anybody would be interested in seeing some more tutorials on Photoshop or Lightroom or anything like that. And literally millions of people responded to this question. Okay, maybe not that many, but there was quite a few people that said it would be helpful if I just tried to teach them a few things that I know. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm a Photoshop master or anything. I know there's a lot of people that responded that probably know more about Photoshop than I do, but I do know a little bit and hopefully I can help you learn a little bit also. So probably the number one thing I get asked in my DMs on Instagram is how to change the color of something in Photoshop. And it's not that tricky if you have Lightroom and Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. All right, so like I said before, if you have a photo already in Lightroom, you're gonna move it into Photoshop to do the color change. Now, I have it selected here in Lightroom, and I go to Photo, Edit In, Adobe Photoshop. And when you do this, it automatically opens Photoshop, and the picture opens into there. Okay, there we go. So alternatively, if you had this photo somewhere on your desktop and you weren't coming from Lightroom, what you would want to do, you would start in Photoshop and you would open it as a new document. You'd end here and you go file, open, and you would find where your photo is, click that and open, and it would also open in the same folder. But I'm coming from Lightroom, so we'll just continue on that path. Okay, so the end result is the thumbnail that I had, which looks like this. And so we'll start fresh using this photo. Okay, now the first thing you wanna do is you see you have a background here and it's locked. Now you wanna make a copy of that. And you do this by hitting Command J. Okay, alternatively, if you want, you can drag this layer onto this icon here, which is the new layer, and it'll make a copy of it also. Okay, either way, you've made a new copy. Now the reason I'm making a new copy is that if I mess up anything later on, I always have the original to fall back onto. So I don't want to destroy my original picture, so I make a copy to continue on that. So now the basis of this is to do a hue saturation color change. Okay, so now to do that, you go to this wheel right here, click it, scroll down, and you'll see hue saturation. Now what that does, is it opens up this panel right here and you can see it changes that. Now, I don't wanna change every color in here. Now there's just a specific color. So I use this color picker right here, click on that, click on the color of my shirt right there. Now it's selected the range in which that is. And now I can use this dial right here to change the color. Now I'm changing my color blue. Now don't worry about the fact right now that it's changed everything within the picture. We'll change that in a moment. Okay, another important thing about Photoshop here is this little icon right here. Now this is the mask of this hue saturation. Okay, so what the mask is saying is there's a little saying that you say about the mask. White reveals, black conceals. So right now, the mask is white, which means everything to do with this hue saturation is showing up in the image. Now, if I hit Command-I on a Mac, like this, it changes to all black, and that means it's concealed the hue saturation everywhere within the image. Now, that's how I wanna start, because I'm gonna paint back just the areas in which I want the color to change. And the way to do that is to use your brush tool, which is over here, this brush. Now, if you don't see this, you can click and hold and you'll see the options here. Now, I wanna use the brush tool. Alternatively, you can hit B on your keyboard and that'll bring it up. Now, when you're bringing back the color in here, the important things about your brush tool are these two icons right here. And it goes back to the saying, where black conceals, white reveals. So right now, it's set on black. So now if I do anything, nothing's gonna happen because I'm painting black onto the mask when the mask is already all black. Now what we wanna do is switch this to be white so that we bring back or reveal some of the hue saturation that we just did. Now you can hit X on your keyboard or you can just hit that little double arrow right there to change the two across. Okay, so now I'm on white. 
And the important things about here, I'll just mention this. So now if you go into your brush properties right here, you'll see two things, the hardness, 100%. And that just has to do with the edges of your brush. If you set it to 100% hard, when I press my brush down, it's got a hard edge all around the sides there. Alternatively, if I put it to 0% hardness, it's gonna have an extremely soft edge. So you can see around the sides, it's a very soft finish. Now I tend to not use fully 100% or fully zero. Sometimes when you're blending, it's okay. But I will choose something maybe 80%. And the flow has to do with every time you brush it in, how strong that brush stroke. So if I put it on 1%, I gotta really brush it in a lot to even get any amount of color change or 100%, it changes really fast. Okay, so now that we know that, we got our settings of our flow, we'll set it at 100% and we have it white to reveal the color change that we have. Okay, we can change our size of our brush right here. We can make it smaller like that, or we can make our brush a lot, a lot larger. Alternatively, you can use the um, open and close brackets. I'm not really sure what you call those parentheses or I don't know, look it up. I'll show you a picture of it on there to cycle up or cycle down. And now all you have to do is just start painting on the part of your shirt here or whatever you're trying to color to change the color of it like this. So I'm changing all this to blue. Just taking your time. I'm going a little bit quick, but obviously you want to take your time in and around the buttons or depending how you want to do this. So now when you get into these really close areas, because if you go too far, I'm going to change the color of my skin and control Command Z or Control Z on a PC to undo my last brush stroke. Now I'm hitting Z on the keyboard and I'm clicking and holding to zoom in. Now pressing B again to go back to my brush. Smaller bracket like this. And now I'm doing this fine little detail work in here. Just like that. Now you'd want to be really careful in here because Okay, and here's a little trick to save time when you kind of have a straight line. If you click the brush once, click once with your mouse, and then hold down shift and go to where you want it at the other one, click one more time, it'll draw a straight line in between those two points. That way you don't have to try and do it yourself. So you can make this as precise as you want. Command zero to go back to 100%, and you can see now, I've changed the color of half of my shirt. Or if you want to keep going to change the rest of your shirt, just keep coloring all on that side. It should be noted here that if, when you're working on your brush and you make a mistake and say color in here, hitting Command Z will work to undo your last move. But let's say you decided you want to try and make this whole other part of the collar. I'll just go really quick here. Obviously you would take a little more time and dedication. I want to make this part of my collar blue also. Now I can only hit com command Z so long and I'll run out of undos. But what you can do is again, like I said, white conceals, black reveals. You can go back and switch this mask back to black, or alternatively hit X to toggle between the two on your keyboard. So now if I go back and I put my brush on black, I can again just paint over this part. And what I'm doing is I'm concealing the color, the hue saturation color change here, and I can erase all this part here. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I hope you like this tutorial. 
If you were confused about anything, leave a comment down below and I'll try and answer your question. Or if you have a suggestion for a tutorial or something you want to know about Photoshop or Lightroom or iMovie or Adobe Premiere Pro, leave a comment down below and I'll try and get around to it eventually. Thanks.